everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan FTC Northwest Championships, checking in 105.38. It's Team Kilts. This team overall, well, great aesthetic first off, but this robot has been doing absolutely phenomenal here on the field. A couple key things I want you to pay attention to this robot is this triple shooter that they're doing. It has been absolutely great uh, so far on as they continue their journey here into state championships. So we'll talk more how they do some color sorting with that. And then their lift mech is really cool too. Not just obviously that it lifts up, but how they're actually positioning that lift mech is something you should really pay attention to and something you can learn a lot about. So let's dive more into Team Kilts here coming up on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new six millimeter hex shaft and motor options and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Awesome, let's start diving into this robot here. Starting with your intake, you got the nice wide intake and you're doing some different colors showing a lot of great stuff that goes into it. Tell me more about what you want to highlight. So our intake is moderately simple. We have a couple of rubber wheels here that will let us um, intake our artifacts quickly. We also have a color sensor down here that lets that lights up some LED lights up here that lets us know what type of artifact we intake and when. We also, sorry. We have a motor back here that's connected to that's connected with a couple of chain wheels that lets us control the, the rubber wheels. And yeah, that's really it. So awesome, when your team was analyzing this game we started out, you obviously have a very wide robot, wide intake for that. Why was that so important uh, for your team to move forward with? Uh, when it came in with our design, we mostly just went for simplicity. Our main goal was to be able to intake and launch artifacts as many and as quickly as possible. Was there anything when you were going through your different iterations of a robot, were there any things that didn't work out so well for you that you had to try to iterate or fix at all? Yes, we once had a rotating, spinning, index type of launcher, but we found that to be way too slow for us, to, well, preferable for us to handle. As I've said, our main goal is just to make it as simple as possible. Sure. Let's pass over to Porter here and talk about uh, your launching mechanism. I love the triple launch your team is doing. Obviously, you're doing some great stuff in terms of color sorting that we talked about as well, but can we just detail more about why this has been so successful and break it down a little bit more for me? Um, so our launcher has been really successful because um, we have these three servos that will let the robot either shoot all of the artifacts at one time if we were trying to stoke quick and score very fast. But it will also, when we're trying to go chief, it will shoot them all at one. It will shoot them one at a time. So that it will go like purple, green, purple, if that was the. So how is it actually indexing then? Do you have like different, do you have like a motor that pushes one at a time or how does that all come together to say, hey, I want to shoot a specific one? Um, so these are all separate servos that will lift up when we click a certain button that we have programmed. Okay, do triangle. As you can see, the servos go up one at a time if you press a certain button on the controller. And if we press a different button on the controller, they will all go up at once. Okay. But then if you press a different button, it will do all of them at once and hit me in the head. So just very smooth overall. I think this whole process that you've gone through, I mean, it's just so smooth on your robot. Can you tell me a little bit more about your choice of wheels on your robot here? Um, a lot of teams that we talk to, you know, we see use more of either maybe want to supply or different durometer wheels, but your team, I think, has gone with a really beefy wheel, as I'd call it. So tell me more about that choice there. So the, these wheels up here, um, we chose the bigger wheels because it would increase torque and we'll make it so instead of having, if we had like these wheels up there, the wheels would just shred and it would be broken basically instantly. And this just makes it more efficient and it increases torque, like I said. So the thing I'll ask you specifically on this is obviously there's a little bit of a squish in this, right? But this texture of a wheel on here, you know, a lot of teams just go with a very just smooth wheel on it. Did you notice like that texturing, would that help you out any differently versus like a, a normal smooth rounder wheel? Um, it helps us uh, grip the artifact better because if we just had smooth wheels, it would like artifacts could just slip off. And... Okay. 
overall, this has been a phenomenal robot to go through. But one of the other things we got to pass over to Garrick for is talk about your lift mech uh, that you're using on this. Um, when we were talking earlier, uh, obviously the lift mech is really cool, but how you have it positioned has been really critical to your team too. Can you walk me through how your lift mech fully works? So we have a motor up here that goes into this worm drive. And the reason we have a worm drive is so that in case of like a power failure, it doesn't like fall backwards because worm drives only allow power to be put through them one direction because this gear would want to turn that way but a worm has like a corkscrew type thread on it and these are like an angled thread which allows it to turn from that corkscrew which would make it so that it, that will turn for power to be put into these for the lift. But and how about where the lift is positioned on here? Can you talk to me about like why it's so important to have this specifically there and then uh, what advantages your teammates have uh, that you've seen versus other teams with the type of lift that you have? So we have our lift on the sides to allow for maximum space under our robot for other teams to fit under us. One of the other things uh, with your lift as well too um, that I noticed is that, you know, from, you know, you said there's no back driving on it, right? Because of that worm gear being in there, that's great. Uh, yeah. But overall, just like the packaging on this, like your team has ballast on your robot I saw here. It's not tippy or anything like that. What considerations did you all put in to make sure you weren't gonna tip over and that your center of gravity was good? We made sure that we would have it lined up to the perfect area. So you gotta get it all lined up in that, yeah. that area so it works out great? Got we it. We always make, make sure that we're lined up. Perfect. Let's pass over to Noah and talk about a couple other key attributes, especially from the programming side. Noah, I'd love to hear more about, uh, you know, what are some of the key things that go into having your robot be so accurate on the field and score so many points. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, one of the things that help us be more accurate is this limelight camera on the front. It reads the April tag in autonomous so that we have the motif for a teleop and we can score motif in autonomous. And that is called a uh, static singleton. When uh, no, at, when we pass over information to uh, from autonomous to teleop, is static singleton. And wh why we do that is to save time for the drivers instead of having to read the motif again because we already read it in autonomous. We pass it over to teleop to save more time and score faster. And. Like Austin said, the color sensors in here in the, send the messages to these to show the drivers how, what artifacts are in the channel. Since on the field, it is hard to see what artifacts are inside the robot so they can easily get what artifacts in which channels they need to go. So when your driver shoots, is he actually selecting a specific one or is there a certain like mode that you have to say, I want this type of motif or how does that work? Uh, on our manipulated controller there are different buttons for how we score one of them is the square button which shoots all three artifacts at once and then the triangle button shoots them all with motif and then how we shoot with motif is that it processes the with the limelight sends the motif to like the control hub and it processes what what artifacts are in there with the color sensors and then it moves the servos up depending on what colors it has. Last thing I want to wrap up on, we have some uh, pathing uh, that your team does on the computer there. Can you just walk me through what a couple of your autonomous pathing plans look like? Uh, one of our autonomous plans is uh, to start here, move here and shoot the artifacts, score them, then pick up all the different artifacts these two rows of artifacts and score them and then we pick up this last one and go and go to the gate so we can empty so when teleop strikes there's a new, there's a empty wrap for us to shoot with and then in this autonomous we empty in the middle of it so we can maximize so we can maximize points to so instead of having it just score all three and then a partner also scoring the preload having it having it instead of overflow it empties it so there's so we get motif points for the for our preload 
we empty it, and then we get a full wrap for, and then we pike there for Kelly off. Well, Team Kelts uh, looking great coming here to state uh, competition. We can't wait to see how you do. Best of luck and a lot of really cool stuff I think teams can learn from here. So thank you so much for taking the time and we can't wait to see how you do. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new six millimeter hex shaft and motor options and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.